right? We have just seen a button on and on click of button we have just seen some actions which can be done on this button, right? So let us see more uh, controls today. We'll we'll just add the controls uh, to the same uh, frame here. Let me just split these things. So let us see these are our button parts. Okay, so let's go ahead with adding a checkbox. J checkbox. Like let us say C1 is equal to like new J checkbox, or we can give some string. Let me just give this as some yellow checkbox. And first, let us add the checkbox to our container add our C1 so, so we just add our checkbox to our uh, container here let me run this yeah you can see that it is filled up right let us do some action on this uh, thing so in flow layout let us say we want flow layout dot let us say from left right. so that the controls will start from uh, left here okay now <coughs> even for c1 checkbox right we have seen uh, in our previous classes in a file that even for checkbox we have a listener called action listener again and the same class is uh, the class which we are working on now is also an action listener let us see how we can attach them so before adding to this you have to do something called add action listener of this second set right now here even if I add something right add action listener if I run this you can see it selected the item yellow it says because we are just taking this as a command right now you can see here whenever it triggers action performed right we are just taking the command and then we are saying selected item right that's why it is giving when I answer this you can see selected item yellow right now here we'll do uh, some action here whenever we select this so we want to do something whenever we unselect this we want to do something let us see how we can do that so let me just say if uh, lstr so i'm just extending my same action performed event class here with one more condition it is equals to yellow let us say so here what we'll check is <coughs> So here we have this checkbox, right? Let me just define this checkbox over here, the top menu. So, and we create the checkbox component here. Now in here, what we'll do, we'll just say something called, uh, yeah, sorry, checkbox C1, because it is globally defined. We have something called each checked c1 dot c1 j checkbox now we have something called c1 dot is you should get e selected yeah e selected right is selected if it is selected then do something so what we'll do is we'll just select something called let us make it as uh, yellow color right so here if it is not selected which is else let's just say it has some maybe gray right. So in the same condition of a same control, right? We are handling two different things, right? With respect to the selection or unselection of this. Let me close this window. Open it up. Now, anyways, these things will work of blue, right? Of green, and all the info. When I check on this yellow, right? Selected item is yellow, and you can see yellow. When I uncheck this again, selected item is yellow, but it will turn to gray. So that is something which is checked and unchecked. Right? So that is how we work with the uh, checkboxes and it can be any number of checkboxes now right so 
so the details will be same like select any number of check boxes with different actions now what you have to do is you have to select the action command what you have done and then you can actually um, uh, work on with whatever you want to do okay, that's why that's how we work with the uh, checkbox now let me take take out uh, some text field maybe right let us take uh, some text field which is j text field maybe make it as t1 is equal to null so we'll create that text field here so because we are taking text field because we have one more uh, listener to this let us say t1 is equal to new j text field but we don't want to give any default thing in here now let us add that to our container which is add of our t1 right. so we have just added a text field to this let me just run this and see what happens here now you can see a text uh, uh, field got added here now uh, if you want to give some size just say dot set some size right? height and width maybe let us say I want it to be some 50 width and some 20 height okay. I'm just setting a size of the text box okay. what is happening here let me just give some string here So this is our text box, right? So now what we'll do, we'll do uh, text box uh, items here now. So in text box, if you have seen before, right? In text box, we have something called both action listeners and your focus listener. Now for text box, let us see what is a focus listener, right? So let us take one more uh, interface here, which is focus listener. So this component again will act as a focus listener again. So let me just minimize all these things, and we'll see what are the focus listener event uh, abstract methods we have. Now you can see there is something called focus gain, and you have something called focus lost. Right? So these are uh, <coughs> two things which we have. So let us attach this action listener to our text field here, which is p1 dot add focus listener of this right. so here what we'll do so whenever it gets any focus then let us set a color again so that we can actually see that let us say some black color maybe right and whenever focus is lost then let's get back to some very white right let's run this these are pretty straightforward events again <coughs> right so when I focus in a sense when I click on this you can see the color changed when you focus lost in a sense when you go to some other control maybe right some other control here right now you can see before selecting this it became white right which means the focus has lost right but anyways when you click on this yellow again it will become yellow why right? because so the two things happen one is focus lost of this text box and uh, click on our on click listener of yellow and when I focus back again I get color changes get back again 
the color changes to white first because it is focus loss and then it changes to uh, gray because we have unchecked your error right so this is how we work with uh, the uh, text box control like uh, how the focus is done and this focus is the same for I mean whatsoever control we use for focus general right it will be same as we have seen here text area is same and all right sorry so that's how we work with uh, components and their uh, relative uh, action business and all right so let us see uh, some complex components like tree we'll just see creating a tree now and how we can create and what different things we can do on tree, tree maybe let me take it as new class CLS tree so let us extend this with uh, J frame so here in J frame we have to give some CLS tree like say f is equal to new cls3 right so here what we'll do we'll set the title first let us say tree sample and just say f dot set size now this dimension you would have seen this dimension right this dimension is nothing but again a dimension contains two parameters inside let us just define this two dimension now dimension is again in the inner class again where it is again in uh, AWD, AWD class where you can just find D is equal to let us say new you can see dimension right again dimension contains again uh, some parameters which is width and height and you can give dimension here which is uh, some let us say 400 or uh, let us say some 500 and height of 550 maybe right? and you can mention the D over here which is which will which is same as mentioning the same size directly right? there is no difference in it and then we will assign something called set visibility of our uh, frame to true right so once these uh, mandatory things are done minimum basic things are done then we will assign something called uh, set default close operation as uh, something which we have something called j j frame dot exit on close okay. so with this we have created a normal frame again normal frame again with something called tree sample okay. let me close this now let's go back and add <coughs> a tree view to this CLS tree So here for adding tree view, right? So again, uh, for tree view, you have to prepare something called nodes. Again, this should be this is this again tree view something which is dynamic again, right? You can add your dynamic tree view here, right? We'll see how. So let us take it as uh, now for each and every node in in the tree view is called as a default mutable tree node. So default mutable tree node is a each and every node of a tree. Node is nothing but you can see here. This is one node. This is one node, right? These are some nodes, and this completely complete structure is called as a tree, right? So what we'll be doing is we'll be doing a nodes first. First we'll arrange the nodes, and then we'll tag a tree to that, right? Let us say I'm just taking a root first. Is equal to new. We have something called default tree node you can give multiple options here let us say here i'm giving something called root so this is nothing but a do, uh, node name you're giving right which is this so this CLS box layout dot java this is a uh, something which is a, a name of a, a node so that's how we have given a name of a node and this reference root node is a reference to this let us take an example of uh, arranging some colors right let us take some default mutable node of uh, let us say color class color is equal to new uh, this let's say some color fine so 
so we'll create one more default notable node of let us say i'm taking red now it's equal to new default tree node of something called red okay. let me give a small values here so they'll be in consistent way and then so so what we'll be we'll doing is root will be my root value and color i want to be i want color to be attached to this root and red so beneath these colors we will attach different things so red will attach something called the default mutable node called dark red beneath this red okay. is equal to new default node of let us call it as dark red and then we'll take one more default notable node uh, something called blue maybe right and we'll just say default notable node of blue right and then so yeah you can you can just leave this for one blue and then you can make one more default node of let us say some green equal to me default node of green there and you can create one more uh, child node for this which is maybe dark green so equal to me default node of this green dark green okay. so we just gave some uh, some things in here which is uh some we have created some nodes here now first was what we have to do is we have to club each and every child nodes right which is red here is nothing but a uh, parent of dark red right so how to club them we have to club them in this way red is my default uh mutable node dot add add again you can see it needs a beautiful tree node some mutable need node. now what will you under red we want something called dark red let us say except that now these two are clubbed right? and blue is a individual let us say because blue we want to club with color let us say and again you have something called green now here you will take up some green here dot add of our dark green, right? now, <coughs> now even these two are clubbed now we have three different colors right which is red blue and green now let us add them to color color dot add of first let us say i'm adding my red color here so this is being added which means these two are added and then let us add color dot add of and let us say we want to add blue here right which is blue and then let us add color dot add of a green right so now what you have done is we have just created all these styles are now clubbed or added under our color and what we have to do now we have to add this color node to root now which is root <coughs> which is nothing but your root dot now again root is something which is a, a mutable node right so which is uh, same as node but what we, what we are making is root is a head of this everything so what we'll do we'll just say add of some color now we are ready with uh, the complete structure of different nodes being tagged now what we'll do we'll now create something called j tree let us say j tree is nothing but is a control which we'll be using for uh, creating a uh, control right tree control let me take it as l o b j tree is equal to new uh, you have something called j tree now you can see here for j tree you have to give some model Right, model of tree now we have already whenever you have clubbed all this default node right so this will make up a model now i can add my root to this right so now what we have done is we have just created a tree here so now this tree should be added to uh, the container right now okay till now we have created a tree yep perfect now let us add to container now how can we add we can just say this dot get content pane right get content pane dot 
and of our component so current component is 3 right perfect so now we have added this to our content pane and we have created something called tree here right so i hope this tree construction is done here and here what we have done we have created a uh, object yeah perfect we have given some size let me run this and have some java application yeah you can see the tree right you can see the tree here. so we have added root first and then we have added a color and we need this color we have added blue blue is something which is exclusive right and when I click on this red, right, red contains again inner child called dark red, and green contains inner child called dark red. Right? So we have got a simple uh, uh, tree view being generated. Right. So that is your uh, tree view, and let us see what 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 do we have for this uh, for for some event, right? So this tree view have got many events but let us uh, see which is the most used one which is add something called yeah, add I'm oh, sorry lobj tree dot we have something called add tree selection right we have something called tree selection listener here right let us select this one because tree selection is something whenever you select something right we will we'll be getting that right so let us say here so we will we'll use some uh, inner anonymous inner class right? so we have tree selection listener tree selection listener here and now you can see we we will get something called value changed right with a tree selection event e right so now here what we'll do we'll just uh, show some uh, some uh, jpn option which is mess message box here we'll see what exactly is being uh, selected message dialog null no component i want to show and then okay before doing this let us create a data so string lstr item maybe is equal to now now here the question is now where can I get my uh, data here right where can I get my uh, complete data here so in, so whatever you know whenever you do some event on this right it will be delegated to listener and the uh, delegation event properties will be sent to its uh, argument now here the argument is nothing but tree selection event so let us see what exactly we have here E is nothing but it will give you your uh, tree selection right okay let us see path yeah you can see let us take up this path once right which is uh, it will give you the path being selected what exactly is a path from root which one which node has been selected let us check this out how it works and anyways it seems this get path is object let us say two string here it will be converted to two string right now let me select on color you can see uh, the node being selected is root and then color click on ok let me expand this expand this click on dark red maybe now you can see root you have color and beneath this red and you have selected dark red now you can actually judge in this way right what is a uh, x path we call it as xml path so I'm xml path right x path so this x path of our uh, node being selected dark red go back on blue root color please. so this is something where you're actually checking out okay what exactly you're doing now, right? so that is something here. now here let us check one more item here so this is something where we have got a path right so here let us check in get path so we want something called get uh, we have something called last component uh, last path component let me make it as two string now let us see what is this last component click on color you can see the end one right okay go down click on red you can see it will give you the actual node name which you have selected right go on dark red you can see this okay so in this way in this way you can actually select these things where you are getting the actual node being selected so based on this obviously now you can make your own option of doing some action 
let us say if you are doing something called equals ignore case of something called red letters alright just make it as red just say get content pane right dot let us say yeah we will create a content pane outside here which is our container <coughs> container some let us say L O V J C is equal to null so before creating anything what we'll do we'll just assign this container to this dot get content pane right? now we'll use this L O V J content container here to L O V J container dot maybe set background right to color dot red you can set this in the same way else if so what else you have you have something called lstr item dot equal ignore case with blue or something called <coughs> so if it is blue see here uh, i'm just checking equals right so i can also say something called contains right so why i'm taking contains here is even if you click on red or dark red doesn't matter i want it as a red let us say right contains okay. so if it contains this yes you have to do that and if it contains this the set background to some thing called color dot right and then one more if condition here if it is green it's a green right so so that's how we do now if the selection is something else then we'll just say it has a some other color like white maybe right we'll just take it as white so it's a last condition so what we'll be doing now let us go and run this now we we'll get the right options here now here when you selected color you have selected a color and now you can see no color because uh, there is no color uh, in in this item now let's go back and select on blue click on ok uh, you should get your blue here back and click on this green we got green here okay okay so when i set green you should get the screen right i've taken the screen here right. i just made this color dot green in this listener and it should change right So have we done the same thing in here? We have done the same thing. Yeah, we have done the same thing. But only thing is we just gave the actual values here. But doesn't matter. So content. Uh, let, let me give the default one. Let us say the default one should be something like uh, yellow. Because we don't have that option here. Let me close this window run this click on something okay oh okay all right is not setting the color okay let me just set this color outside this window outside this listener as such Ah, okay okay it is completely filled with three right so this complete control has become three okay 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 i understood i hope so let me give some size for this tree set size maybe set size of uh let us say height is 100 uh, width is 100 and height is 100 again let us say width is 150 okay now let us see so it works Let 
me maximize this. But, yeah. There's something which has been given. Okay. We'll do one thing. Uh, this is completely filled it seems like crazy. Now we'll take one layout for this. Let us see. Dot set layout of new. Uh, maybe we will take it as a flow layout. Or what we can do is. So whenever we're adding this one to my grant content plane dot use my get content in this one just flow layout dot right. okay so we'll add one more component let us add a few more components just to make sure we don't need any listeners right so we'll just say Let us say I want it on north, right? And let us say, come on, we'll take the same model out and just say I want it on uh, dot south. I want it on some dot east, and yes, that's it. Anything else? We don't take it in the center. Let us say. this thing that we run this right I hope now you can see right so these are some things now you can see the tree here right now as such it grows right now you can see red blue run. now when I click on dark red it will become red right so this was actually filled with the tree view right this was actually filled with the tree view that's why you're not able to see when I click on red again go dark green okay green will be green blue will be blue again then when i click on something else right it will become white because we have made it white now these are some things now which we have arranged in here like uh, we have taken a border layer to different directions i have not taken anything in center right so that's why i can see something in center right? that's how uh, you can work on your <coughs> these things now on uh, dynamically so what we need is sometimes anyways on selection yes you can do something but on selection of something you may need to append some other nodes right it can happen right it can happen during uh, in real time if there if your tree view is very heavy right so everything will not will not be loaded at once so on click on the node side right, what will do you will send the request get the details for this and then you will be populating that now we'll see how to dynamically do that okay so what we'll do here is so we'll have to create this which is so we have got an item here right so which is a component now let, well, let us take it as component here which is default tree mutable node let us say hello which is current node right which is curr and what we'll do we'll, it's a component in the sense you can see path so get last path component will give you an object now this object is nothing but your uh, default tree node right now let me take it out this two string and let me type cast it to default tree node right and now anyways we'll do this one which is uh, control side v string is equal to I'll check current node maybe dot two string maybe or we can say dot get uh, yeah. what does he have here and you can direct it to dot two string maybe we'll see what happens here now you have a node right so the main uh, purpose here what we are doing is right on selection of something 
I want to get the data and actually fill in some other thing here right let us create a new node here which is let me say one more default mutable node hello bj new maybe is equal to new default node let me just call it as something like new node right we'll add the same node to all and what we'll do we'll just again it is something like you are adding a new node to the existing node we have got this node from something called event tree event right which is e right we'll be adding the same thing here let me take it as i want to add to my current node dot add of one more mutable node which is new child or it is hello which new right so now we have added that right and with respect to this current selection we have to okay let me see this how it works let me run this now when you select on some blue, blue yeah now you can see here right a new node is when i click on ok again we'll see one more node is added. now anyways you can add this node based on some conditions now it all depends on how you are applying your logic as per the code java right when i click on this now there are two things guys when i click on this right this is something which is maximize and minimize minimize of this tree right we are not working on this click we are working on this click of this uh, node when i click on this yes the default node will be get added click on this right and add default node will be added right click on this yes right so that's how it uh, you know go on add uh, different nodes as such right so it can go any number of click on this root right click on this color so based on the node which you are actually checking whether it is default node or not right it will be adding different things right click on this node let's see one more node right so that is how you can actually add multiple uh, you know uh, things in tree view and this is how you can use tree view to gen uh, you know uh, move it uh, dynamically and actually make use of them right so that is all about uh, tree views right and actually this will be uh, it will be so uh, simple but only thing is you just have to know what are different things you have right and uh, you have to know the requirements which you need to have Fine. so that is one thing is tree view and let us see one more complex maybe right let's see one more complex uh, component and and we'll wind up the swings right uh, so we'll see one more real time component we'll be using something called uh, yeah we, we'll see tab pin right. we'll just check out tab pin how to design a tab pin again the tab pin again it will be it will be simple again right let me take this uh, things all the listeners and everything will be uh, pretty much will be same for all extends uh, j frame and let me take this as tab here and yeah i catch so <coughs> again here um, as yesterday actually even Ujula was mentioning like we'll be using J panel right we have J panels here so J panels are internally used and these J panels are actually direct uh, childs of window again right? that's why I haven't mentioned the J panel here it's a direct it comes under direct a window or a frame directly as we have seen in AWT right in AWT if you remember these are classes in AWT which contains under container we have these things panel and uh, this right so in the same way we have direct uh, panels under a window and a frame again they come uh, they again come under component class which again comes under your container right we can use them now for uh, using this tab pane right so we'll be actually taking the help taking help of uh, panels here right so let us create a panel oops let us create a panel here right let me call it as uh, the main panel main panel method is equal to new j panel now this is the panel which we will be adding to our uh, uh, container address right let me take a container here uh, container let us say lobjc is equal to null right so this container is nothing but a uh, 
this start get content pane now at the end of this what we'll do we'll be adding this to uh, adding this component for LOVG main panel to this only main panel we will not be using adding any uh, tabs or such right so this is our container this is our panel so in this panel we'll be working on right so you can actually set even this panel is something which also is something like uh, it's a part of a frame right you can set everything to this panel which is like everything in a sense I can set my la layout to this panel you can see I can set my layout let us say I'm setting some border layout let us say right you can directly set it to the border layout right and uh, yeah to this panel what we'll do we'll add a, a tab uh, panes so before adding tab panes again let us say so these are something which is tab panes right one tab and second tab so whatever content you can see here is nothing but one more entity one more component right obviously in order to get all the component again you have to create a one more panel and add it to tab okay we'll create uh, let us say we let us create four tabs so for four tabs first you have to create four panels let us say it's a panel one is equal to new let us say it's panel one panel and in this panel itself we'll add some controls right? so how can i add, let us say i'm directly adding some j button here right you can add that directly so if to this panel it will be added let us say this is first uh, make it as first tab let us say right? so these were for my, my for my first tab right so i've added my this j oh i'm sorry no, you cannot. You have to you do it. You have to add it to panel. Dot. Add of your component, right? You can add your component here. In this all. You can view the name of panel. Right? You added a new component to panel. So in this way, let us take some five panels so that we can create some five tabs, maybe four and a five. Right? So in the same way, let us create this. So here we'll see it's a panel two. I'm adding a second, third, fourth, and fifth. Okay. Same let us take a second, take it as third, take it as fourth, take it as fifth tab. Right? Some tabs. So we just taken a panel here. Now this panel should go to tab, right? now what you have to do now you have to start using the tab it's a very simple one you can just say tab pane here just say lobj tabs is equal to you have to create a uh, tab pane here right? and then now for this tabs what we'll do we'll add different panels in different tabs now how to add tab is again we have something called uh, add tab right yeah, add tab. But I say I'm giving it as my first, just an, a name here, and the component, right? In component place, let me give P1. But P1 will be added to my first tab. Right? The whole uh, panel will be filled with my first tab called first. In the same way, let me add more tabs, which is let us say second, and I want to add a P2, P3, P4, and P5. Let us say this is third. Let us say this is some fourth. Let me just give something here. Let me just say fifth. Some tab. Right? Now, <coughs> what we have done, we have created a main panel. And yeah, we have created different panels. We have added two. <coughs> now, what we have to do, we have to yeah, add these tabs to my main panel, which is LOBJ main panel dot. I can add any component to this, right? So what I'll do, I'll add my panel. tabs. Now to this main panel, I have tabs. So to, to these tabs, I have uh, added multiple panels, right? And for this multiple panels, I have added my controls. Right? Now I hope this seems fine. So this panel again is been added to our uh, container, right? Now let me run this once. Yeah, perfect. Can you see these tabs now? The first tab, the first tab button, second tab is this third, fourth and fifth. Right? Oh, okay. 
why it is okay now I forgot to do it five five now anyways you can see here two controls being added you can add any number of controls as such right let me run this again right you can see this four fifth tab right so that's how it works so these are uh, the tabs which you created in uh, sweep anyways if you want to change the positions right you can change the positions of tab again right you have that uh, you know provision for that we have something called in tabs uh, have something called set uh, is it placement no it is set let us use it tab. yep we have something called tab placement tab placement you can place your tab i mean tabs where you want let us say you have to give some uh, if you know the enum number you can give otherwise you can just go for tab pane dot if you make it dot now you can see where you want right let us say i want all the tabs in bottom right all right let me run this okay. now you can see here all your tabs became the bottom aligned right and all the data will be shown above right. you can you can you know actually now you can customize your tabs and whatever you want whatever you have done like drawings and all you can do it now here right it it will work here but what you are doing is you are doing a you are using the same form for multiple tabs right that's how you can use it now let us see uh, what event you can have in tab right anyways we know what event you can have the components which we will be using here but let us see how to add different event to this so the basic event or mostly used event will be to which tab you are going right? that's the main thing right and for that uh, let us see which uh, listeners we can use uh, yeah yeah and i have one question yeah Jola. so the j panel we can use only for tab pin or, mm. or we can use it anywhere else you can use anywhere else so even in so what does it do exactly so panel will create a separate container for you right on container you can see okay. here panel is separately okay, okay, yeah, okay, it for is everything, okay. yeah for everything panel is i think like you, know, you have a bigger let us say bucket you are check you are taking a small containers you are placing balls and placing it again in a bucket right asset is to access mm -hmm. a panel right you can okay. create multiple panels uh, in a same container right so okay. whenever i am saying container it is something called con content pane of a form right? mm -hmm. yeah you can use multiple containers Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, what were we checking out? Uh, so, where were I? Where was I? Okay. I was creating an event, right? Fine. So, we'll see what event. C dot add. You have something called uh, add on. No, no, no. You have something called. We are actually trying to change the table. We have something called change. Yeah, you have something called change listener here, which is let us try out change listener. Yeah, because you cannot keep you know all the listeners. I hope uh, I know that you know you cannot keep, but you can just search for that. Right, whenever you click on add, you can you can see this uh, you know the listeners here, whatever you want. But most probably whenever you use when you are as using famous controls, right, which are used in real time, then you maybe uh, you can keep in memory, right. So yeah. So whenever it changes listener, change listener in the sense whenever you click on any other tab, which means the state has been changed. State is changed to other tab, right? So now here, what we need to do is we have to get which tab we have selected, right? Again, for that we'll be going to again the same event, which is change event. Now here, what we have to get is we have to get something called uh, which tab. Let me just search which. What you can use? Okay, we have get source. Perfect. You can use direct get source. So get source here is nothing but you are actually getting the complete tab pane. In the same way here in tree view, right? What we have seen here in tree view, we have got a default node, right? I think even here it should be there. Even here it should be there. Something like e dot get source. Uh, perfect. Here you have get source. This get source will give you the whole tree, right? Into this event, and you can work on that, right? Perfect. Now here, which means get source means I'm getting the whole tab. If I'm getting the whole tab, obviously I can, I can see which tab is being clicked, right? Now let us see how. Let me take it as a tab pane here. 
let us say it's my LOBJ uh, current uh, tab pane is equal to my e dot get source anyways this is the object that you have to type cast it to tab pane now in this tab pane uh, you can get, first what you have to get you have to get something called index like which tab is being clicked now how to get that is you have something called get um, you have to debug um, perfect selected index this selected index will give you what uh, index you have selected now we don't need selected index here we have to get the name of a tab being uh, selected right so for that anyways for getting a name again you need same get, get selected index and then let me get the name here string lstr name of tab is equal to anyways you don't need to get this separately right you can directly get it as this we have current tab dot now how can i get the name we have something called get text oh get name we have right get name will give you the name of this panel but you have to get okay title at tool tip here i think yes title at title at some index now here itself you can directly give the current pane dot get selected index you don't need this index huh? now now you got something called get current tab pane it will give you current tab and uh, sorry tab complete control and get title at the index you have selected so index will be selected selected will be will be getting from e itself which is get source now let us show it in uh, j option pane let me see whether this works fine so message of null and just say uh, selected tab is plus some lstr name right? we'll see whether this works first so it's on our bottom and i can ah, okay perfect it sucks now when I click on third, it says selected tab is third. When I click on fifth, it will say selected tab is fifth, right? Perfect, it is working fine. So this is how you can handle your uh, tab pane, right? Uh, when I click on third, it will go to third, yep, and it is working fine. Right? This is something where you can use something called add change listener, where uh, as per the change of your tab selection, right? It is giving us some change in uh, so this is how you can get which tab is selected and maybe on load of your tab right you can do something whatever you want right? whenever you click on this okay if you, if it feels that you are you are actually uh, getting this you can do that right? yeah so i think that is what is a tab pane and i hope uh, uh, this is a complete tab pane and this is how you can actually create a controls in swing and different components you have We've seen different uh, how to add listeners and how to add listeners in different ways of replicating class, right? Extending or implementing them and all. Fine. I hope uh, this was this went pretty much good. Right? Just go through uh, the videos which we have, guys. And that will be the end of Swing's topic. And uh, tomorrow we'll just go through applets. Uh, we'll just go through in quick way because if you understood this complete Swing's and uh, applets i mean swings and error right so we'll we can apply the same thing in swings in applets but the only different difference is here we are just running in a standalone part right there we'll be rendering the whole this thing in a web page right we'll see a sample applet and you can apply the whole thing you can apply all the event delegation models everything in applets right we'll first see what is the architecture of uh, applets what is the life cycle and uh, how we can actually go for different things in applets and and we'll see an example of applet and uh, yeah so i hope that will be the end of uh, uh, core java right?